Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about parametrizations of plane curves. So parametric equations are a new way for us to define curves in space. And so what this is useful for is maybe taking like a particle that moves along a path, but it's not necessarily like a nice path of a regular function that we know about. The curve or path traced by a particle moving in the xy plane is not always the graph of a function or a single equation. So here is our parametric equations definition. So x and y are given as functions. So notice f of t is our x value, g of t is y, and then it's over some interval, some interval i for t values. Then the set of points in our xy plane are equal to f of t comma g of t, defined by these equations, and this is called a parametric curve. And the equations are parametric equations for the curve. So we're going to break this down and so you'll see some examples. Now let me give you some details about our definition. First, the variable t is a parameter for the curve. So one way you can kind of think about t is time is, is a possibility for t. Um, like when a particle starts moving, you can call that t equals zero. The domain i is called the parameter interval. For t between a and b, so notice this is a closed interval for your parameter, the initial point on your curve is when you plug in a for t, okay, into your functions for x and y, and then the terminal point on your curve, so where your curve ends, is when you plug in b for t into your functions. And then parametric equations and the interval um, of the par parameter interval together, that's what makes up the parameterization for a curve. So let's look at an example. Sketch the curve defined by x equals sine of pi times t over 2, and then y equals t, and this is for t between 0 and 6. So this is an example right here given to you as parametric equations. Okay, this is a parameterization. It has um, functions for x and y and then an interval for t. So let's see what this curve looks like. We're just going to start with our initial t value of 0, plug it into our function for x. We find out that x is 0. We do the same thing for y, plug in t is 0, and we get that y is 0. We'll do that again for another t value. So I'm just going by whole numbers, so I plug in 1 next. So sine of pi times 1 over 2 is just sine of pi over 2, which is 1. And then y is just t, which was 1 in this case. So if you do this for just the whole numbers for your interval, 0 to 6, you'll get the following x and y values. You can pick more numbers. You don't have to just stick to whole numbers, and I'll show you another example where we pick more. So take a look at this curve. So our particle, or, or the motion that this curve is describing, starts down here when t is 0. At the point, notice it's 0, 0. Then it moves to the point 1, 1, and then it keeps going. As we plug in a different t value, it, as t is increasing, the particle would be moving up this curve. Okay, so this is actually maybe not enough t values for you to know that this curve would have this kind of bendiness to it. So you, you might need to plug in more in the future if you have um, an uncertainty about how to draw the actual curvature of this curve. So this is our first example. Notice it is on a closed interval for t. So we start at 0, that's our initial point, and we stop up here at 0, 6, and that's our terminal point. Let's try this one here. We're going to sketch the curve defined by x equals cosine t, y equals sine t, and this is for t between 0 and 2 pi. So we're going to start by picking t values. I'm going to just start with the very first one, which is t equals 0. So I plug in 0 into my function for x, so cosine of 0 is 1. I plug in 0 for my y function, which is sine of 0, which is 0. And then I keep doing this. You can pick any numbers for t, and you pick them in increasing order, and the next one I chose is pi over 4. Okay, so cosine of pi over 4 is about 0.71, and that's going to be our x-coordinate. And then sine of pi over 4 is about this 0.71, and that's our y-coordinate. So we're going to have a 
point on our curve that this defines as 0.71 comma 0.71. And then you pick another t value. The next one I picked was pi over 2. I got my x value is 0, y value is 1, and then you keep doing that. Okay, let's do another one. I picked 3 pi over 4 for my next t value. And so we have negative 0.71 for x and then positive 0.71 for y. And hopefully this was kind of looking familiar as far as my values were concerned. And you might have recognized that we were actually moving along the unit circle here. So what this was saying is that if you this path described by this parameterization is that you have a particle starting right here at 1 comma 0 and then it's moving along the circle okay as t gets bigger as t increasing you're actually moving counterclockwise around a circle and then because we're told that we should stop with t is equal to 2 pi it's one tracing of this circle going counterclockwise now this is like i said the unit circle Okay, so just the other way to describe this would be the way you're most familiar with it, most likely, is x squared plus y squared equals 1. But this is the parametric way of describing this circle. So in general, the parameterization where x equals a number times cosine t, I'm calling that number a, and then y equals the same number times sine t, this actually just describes a circle, but a counterclockwise motion along that circle where the radius is a. So in this case, this was radius 1. If there was a number like 5 in front of cosine and sine, that would have been a circle with radius 5. So in general, this is the parameterization of a circle. Let's try this example. We are going to find a parameterization this time for a line through the point 1, 2 with slope negative 2. So this is new because I've been giving you the parameterizations. This time we're finding it. So let's start with what we know about lines. This is our um, point slope form of a line. You maybe you remember this from algebra. And so let's plug in our values. We know that y is 2, x is 1, and then our slope is negative 2. So what you're going to do here is you're going to pick some possibility for t, and I'll show you that there's more than one. So we are going to let t equal x minus 1. I'm choosing this quantity in the parentheses. So if we solve for x, because remember what we're looking for in terms of a parameterization, we want x equals something, uh, y equals something in terms of t. So we solve for x, we get x is 1 plus t, and then we move on to figure out what y is. So we know this equation that we just had written down, and then we just decided that in the parentheses, x minus 1 is what we're calling t. So you just replace the parentheses, x minus 1, with t. And so you have that y minus 2 equals negative 2 times t. And then if you solve for y, we get y equals 2 minus 2t. Two so then a parameterization for the line is x equals 1 plus t, comma, y equals 2 minus 2t. Two and then this is a line with no kind of closed interval that we're told about. So this is for t from negative infinity to infinity. This is a line that's going to continue on. Now, in general, if you're asked to find the parameterization for a line through some point, a comma b, and you know the slope is m, then in general you can use this setup where x is just the x value a plus t, and then y is the y value b plus your slope times t. So you can use this one in, in the future in general. Now, there is what's called a natural parameterization for any function f of x equals y is the function, and you can just say that x is t, and then y is just f of t. And that's going to be on whatever the original domain is for that function. So using the example we just went over, take a look. A natural parameterization for the line we just worked on is just to say that x is t this time. Notice it's different from what we initially chose. We chose t is x minus 1. So now x is t. So then you would just say, from your equation back up here, y minus 2 equals negative 2 times t minus 1. And then you just solve this for y. So y equals 4 minus 2t. So this is a different parameterization for the same line. So I do want you to be aware that there are 
multiple parameterizations for the same curve. Let's do one more example here. We are going to identify the path traced by a particle moving in the xy plane that is given by x equals square root t, y equals t, and this is for t that's zero or more. So what you're going to do this time is you are going to try to eliminate t. Okay, so based on your equations, you're going to try to put them together somehow, get rid of t, and hopefully it's going to give you something that you recognize as far as a function goes. So we are going to start with x. You don't necessarily have to. You could start with y, but we're going to start with x. And if I square the equation for x, I know that x squared is the same as t. Then moving on to my equation for y, I can replace that y equals t with y equals x squared because of the work I just did. So now I have to remember what I have going on for this um, domain restriction over here, that t has to be 0 or more. And so on my outputs here, I have to still keep that in mind. So since y was equal to t, t has to be 0 or more, so y has to be 0 or more as well. And then back here, t was 0 or more, and so when you take the square root, x was going to be positive no matter what. And so x is 0 or more. And why we care about that is because of the path. So the particle moves along the right half of the parabola. So back here we got that the, the curve was actually y equals x squared. But we don't want the whole parabola because t starts at 0. And so we are starting down here at the origin. And this particle would be moving along the parabola, going up like this. Um, and then we usually draw an arrow on the curve to show which direction um, the particle would move as t increases. All right, that's it.